Today we're going to focus on one of the most groundbreaking drugs, glycerasip. Because of that, we have initiated a pivotal trials in pancreas cancer in China, and hopefully that will be, you know, um, expand the outside of China. Our drug has the minimum GI toxicity. I think that's one part I think will stand out, differentiate us from other uh, treatment. You say that the safety profile is uh, improved with the drug that we have on the other markets. What are your secrets? I'm really hoping to see actually a benefit of two oral drugs in the frontline and small cell lung cancer. I think that would be extremely helpful for patients that don't have to go to the hospital taking, you know, IV medications by just taking two oral medications. So I think that that is something to focus on. In which stage of FJ approval is uh, the drug now? And uh, what are your prognoses regarding this process? When we move the trial outside of China, we need to be mindful of a truly indeed need the global trial with diversity uh, patient population. That would more reflect whatever the region we're doing the trials um, in. Your work is truly inspiring and brings hope not for us, for our patients too. Hello everyone and welcome to Onco Daily, where we will discuss the 10 most promising cancer drugs not yet approved in solid tumors 2024 edition. And today we're going to focus on one of the most groundbreaking drugs, glycerasip. I'm Amalia Sarkisian, a medical oncologist and the senior editor at Onco Daily. And today we have a pleasure of welcoming Dr. Andrea Van Gillum, who is the chief medical officer of Jacobio Pharma, and also she is in charge of global clinical development and operations at Jacobio Pharma project. Welcome, Dr. Andrea Van Gillam, and thank you for your time being with us today. Glad to be here. Uh, can you please briefly introduce yourself and your background? Sure. My name is Andrew Van Gillam. I'm a medical oncologist by training, has been practiced uh, oncology, particularly in phase one setting as well as GI oncology settings over the last uh, 15 years or so. Uh, prior to joining Jacob Bio as um, CMO, um, I have been practicing. Um, I have been practicing oncology at uh, academic institution for a long time. Thank you, Bob. That's very remarkable. And uh, just starting about uh, discussing our drug, can you please provide an overview? Of what is glycerase? What does it do? What are the main indications? Yeah, so glycerosip is uh, one of the KRAS D12C um, small molecule oral inhibitor. It is very potent, covalent, uh, inhibit uh, GDP uh, KRAS. Uh, KRAS. Um, so this is a drug that has been developed uh, years at a Jacob Bio. Uh, we have completed our pivotal phase two study, single arm phase two study in non-small cell lung cancer in patients who have progressed in standard frontline therapy. Yes, uh, congratulations on your presentation at ASCO. I had the privilege of attending there. Uh, you're presenting the results. Can you please update with the most up-to-date results on the trials which were already completed? Sure, sure. Yeah, so the presenter was um, one of the leading PIs, um, Dr. Um, Xu Yuan Kai, last name is uh, Dr. Uh, Xu. Um, he uh, has initially presented our pivotal data at ASCO plenary theory on April 30, 2024. That was well received and it was also part of the panel discussions at uh, that time. And then the data was updated uh, at ASCO rapid, uh, CM, part of a CME for all the presenters was rapid. Um, so it's kind of rapid translation and that is part of the collection of the abstracts for uh, that has been presented at ASCO plenary theory. Um, so our study has enrolled about 119 patients um, with non-small cell lung cancer uh, harboring KRAS G12C in the second line settings above. 94.1 person received a standard platinum-based therapy plus IO therapy. Um, we uh, what we observed uh, the primary endpoint is actually uh, confirmed OR by IRC, and our data showed to confirm OR forty seven point nine percent. 
there are four patients actually had a PR um, had a CR. Um, the median PFS 8.2 months. So I think that's very encouraging compared uh, to the existing FDA approved drug. Oh, that's very encouraging and glad to hear that in this population, we are achieving this kind of results. And um, are there any other indications where glycrosip is being tested for? Yeah, sure. Because it's such a potent drug, um, we have tested in uh, pancreas cancer and other rare disease type and also CRC, a colorectal cancer with KRAS uh, mutant. Kirazi 12C mutant. And those data has been reported at different medical conferences. So for instance, our uh, Kras G12C glycerin um, data, single agent data has been reported at a GIS as oral presentation, showing really prom uh, promising results. Uh, so I think that because of that, we have initiated a pivotal trials in pancreas cancer in China, and then hopefully that will be, you know, um, expand the outside of the China. Oh, that's encouraging. Hopefully we get the results soon. So, and what uh, will you tell us about the safety profile of the drug? Yeah, so see the drug is well tolerated. I think uh, one of the key thing is um, that GI toxicity are with very minimal. So I think a key thing when you think about KRAS G12C is um, the existing drugs that prof AE profiles so largely um, uh, lie into uh, GI toxicity. It's part of uh, both the sort of as the adagrasib. I think the adagrasib more per, uh, predominantly. Our drug has minimum GI toxicity. Uh, for instance, diarrhea, nausea, the vomiting, all less than 10%. Uh, nearly no um, grade three treatment related to GI to, uh, you know, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea. So I think in that, uh, it's really helpful for patients who are uh, gone through extensive a treatment in the past, for instance, frontline therapy, they now, um, you know, have a lot of nausea, vomiting, underlying uh, issues. So I think this drug can make them more compliant uh, with their, um, you know, or administration and the minimum GI toxicity. I think that's one part I think will stand out, differentiate us from other uh, treatment. So you say that the safety profile is uh, improved with the drug that we have on the other markets. That's very remarkable. And indeed, for patients, it's one of the most important thing also, the quality of life. Instead. <clears throat> and uh, so uh, having led more than 60 clinical trials and developing the trials that were led to uh, FDA approval and changing the treatment landscape. So how do you see where to focus your research area? What are your, uh, what are your secrets? Yeah, so I, I think a part of it, you know, this is a really evolving landscape. It's extremely exciting for people who have done RAS uh, research in the past for me has been oncologists who have done a lot of clinical trial targeting various part of the RAS pathway. So I think it's very encouraging with the sort of emerging class drug with the direct inhibitor and also some of the pan-RAS inhibitor that's currently in clinical trial. So I think for us at Jekyll Bio, we also have a SHIP-2 inhibitor. So our focus is in combination our KRAS G12C plus our SHIP-2 inhibitor because of SHIP-2 inhibitor in a preclinical setting had demonstrated synergistic anti-tumor effect in particular non-small cell lung cancer KRAG 12 c model. So we have, um, uh, you know, sort of a really a good uh, sample size, about 100 patients that, who actually were treated with a combo in non-small cell lung cancer in a frontline setting with um, uh, promising efficacy. So that's part of a company's strategy, you know, in terms of how we bring KRAS G12C forward in a frontline setting is in combination with our SHIP2 inhibitor. And by the way, that was also presented as well, um, as oral uh, as oral presentation. The development of therapeutic session, right? If I yes, yeah. Yeah, but I did that. It was very encouraging and very nice to hear mm -hmm. these most promising drugs. <clears throat> and uh, as a PI and leading uh, in the co-bio pharma, where do you see the most promising application for glycerin in cancer treatment? Yeah, I think uh, what we really um, like to see is because we have launched our phase three trials, the registration trials 
we shipped to past KRAS E12C in the frontline and small cell lung cancer. Um, so this has improved by uh, CDE. Uh, they were also hoping to bring this combination outside of China. So I think uh, I'm really hoping to see actually a benefit of two oral drugs in the frontline and small cell lung cancer. I think that would be extremely helpful for patients that don't have to go to the hospital taking you know, IV medications by just taking two oral medications. So I think that that is something we're focused on for the future development of KRAS-G12. In addition, obvious single agent pancreas and perhaps the CRC, but I think the main focus for us, uh, sort of medium-sized biotech is the frontline combo study. Yes, indeed, you have a really nice point of saying oral drugs, people staying at home and also giving potency, it will be really benefit. And hopefully in frontline static, we're going to get this uh, good result. So in which stage of FDA approval is uh, the drug now? And uh, what are your prognoses regarding this process? Yeah, so I think uh, you were asking um, regarding, so this drug actually has been submitted to the NDA in China. Um, so that's being reviewed as we speak. Uh, so we are, you know, we, we're looking forward to get a feedback from China, you know, CD or NMPA. And meantime, we have done single agent studies in US, extra, you know, um, in Europe. So, and also we are done combo um, single agent for our SHIP2 and both KRAG to see extra China. So we're really hoping to soon be communicating with FDA and EMA regarding our China data and to see where we're going with the pivotal trial um, uh, design. When are we gonna expect the results of the pivotal trials? <laughs> we're hoping to uh, pivotal trials it require large sample size, you know, randomizations. Uh, so we're hoping complete enrollment by end of the next uh, year um, in China. Um, so that is the, that's you know a projection, um, and then we should be seeing you know clinical data soon after that. We look forward to the results, and hopefully we can uh, see the good results there and bring the hope for our patients. <clears throat> and um, while doing all this research, we, we have uh, a lot of challenges in our way. What were the biggest challenges you have faced in your research? And what did you do and how do you overcome? Yeah, I think uh, in terms of uh, research or global development, um, you know, this is a uh, Jekyll Bio is... Um, uh, large uh, base in China, but have a U.S. R&D side. So I think um, for us, we really hope to utilize the part of China data with safety data, extra um, China, um, and also uh, move the sort of a move the trial or expand uh, the patient population uh, outside of China. Uh, so for us, uh, with the current, um, you know. Um, competitive landscape. So we really need to have a differentiation approach in terms of how to tackle KRAG 12C uh, patient with non-small cell lung cancers um, globally. Uh, so that's why we position ourselves, diff you know, slightly different from the larger farmer with the oral oral indic uh, combination. Uh, additionally, I think, you know, um, we, we need to um, also uh, be mindful uh, the cost um, of the studies. Uh, of the clinical trials. And also when we move the trial outside of China, we need to be mindful of a truly indeed it need a global trial with diversity uh, patient population that would more reflect whatever the region we're doing the trials um, in. So I think all those things, um, you know, that need to be taken into consideration uh, for global clinical trial design. Yes, indeed, it's very important. And these challenges for foreign companies facing to globalization of their research and bringing it to bigger market is a problem. Hopefully we're overcoming it. And I see you already have the expansion cohort of another population too. <clears throat> Hopefully it goes bigger and bigger. And um, as we are going to summarize, and thank you for sharing your research. Uh, is there anything else would you like to share about like Recipe and what to expect next? 
Yeah, we really hope, you know, we're, you know, next a few milestones. One is receive the NMP approval, you know, in China and also aligned with FDA <clears throat> and EMA regarding our pivotal trial with our combinations of frontline non small cell lung cancer and, uh, and also get a readout with our pivotal trial in pancreas cancer. So I think in summary, we're really hoping to expand sort of our trials territory outside of China and, uh, you know, and also looking for collaborators uh, that expedite uh, drug development to extra China. Oh, that's very encouraging. Thank you, Dr. Wang, for being here today and for joining us for this discussion. We're uh, very excited to the results and hopefully we can see the bigger results soon. And congratulations on already presented results at ASCO. And your work is truly inspiring and brings hope not for us, for our patients too. Thank you for joining us today at Jonko Daily. We are very happy that we have featured the uh, glycorosib as one of the most promising cancer drugs, and hopefully we're going to get approval very soon. Until then, we wish you continued success, and the work you are doing is very important. Thank you for being here. Thank, Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to Onka Daily on YouTube. Hit the bell icon to stay updated.